Okay. Let me just pull out of my driveway before I start talking. No, oh, that's too fast. And this garbage right in my way? Kidding me, man? Alright, so I'm doing something just a bit different with the recording this morning. Um, in case you can't tell, you're probably going to hear a lot of background noise, so I don't think it's going to be as clear as usual. But I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out, simply because um, I can't find a piece of glide in my house. So I think on my drive to work, I'll just do what I can. Even though my car makes more noise probably than the house. It doesn't matter, right? Alright, so what did I want to talk about? Um, recent events, actually. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are actually readers in, like the very small community I have, but basically the important news is that Batoto has gone down, which is a major loss, huge loss for the community because it was really the last good site that gave us a chance to actually read things in high quality um, without like invasive ads and uh, also without those stupid watermarks scraper sites use like Manga here and uh, oh, what's another bad one? Bunch of cheap. Literally every every other website. It's just I, I really don't like Manga here at Manga Fox. Actually, those those are two of my least favorites. Um, but yeah, there's essentially now this giant gap because Batoto wasn't the biggest website. I'll admit that much. I used it for at least maybe like four years, maybe five, and I'm stuck behind this guy now. Um, I used it for about maybe four years. So that's that's I think more accurate. But it was really the best site after my other one closed, which I can't even remember what the name of it was. Um, where there was actually like a relative amount of quality and there was a good listing of comics and uh, like in comparison to other websites that didn't want, like that would literally just take everything they could find and then post them online, they actually kind of respected the, uh, the scan laters, the people who actually put the work in to, you know, upload the comics and, you know, scan them in and then of course translate it, uh, not video edit. And, uh, and image edit, that's what I'm looking for. Anyway, it actually was like the very one... Oh, shit. Um, sorry. I hit a puddle. Um, it was probably the only site that actually really catered to the crowd of people who wanted a good website. <laughs> uh, it, it was respectful of the people who put the work in, and it didn't try to like cut off the uh, credits pages either. Which usually, I mean, I mean, in most cases, usually has something like, "Oh, if you like the comic, make sure you go and buy it from a proper retailer when it comes out in the U.S." Um, yeah, things like Magnify just cut that off. They just get rid of it while they're uploading, which is the shittiest thing you can do. I mean, really. On top of watermarking, stealing, and not respecting the creators, you just literally like cut out the incentive, and like, I, I just, it just makes me really angry, actually. But I mean, I actually kind of helped out with the group, so again, there's more bias there. It doesn't matter though. Um, but yeah, but Toto's basically officially down. I checked it yesterday. It's not gone, per se, but it is kind of on its way out because you'll try to load, like even using the search bar right now to find something, it's just like, it, it just doesn't work. It, it gives you some error about, um, uh, what the heck, it's like the three boxes, I, I don't know. It just it just tells you it can't find the web page, pretty much. That's, that's the essential part of it. So, yeah, that's not good. And there was always this, like, leading up to this even, there was pages that just wouldn't load. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's just frustrating. So, yeah, Batoto's gone, and now there's this huge void and this huge need, really, for a good website for people to actually, uh, to post their stuff in, like, proper quality and to not get, like, uh, pissed off at the ads of other, other websites. But at the same time, really a place to discover new comics because while I was recovering, because I, I don't know how much, I, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but I archive a ton of shit. Um, I archive anime, I have terabytes full of anime, and I'm working to fill up um, really more like a regular hard drive with manga because it's a lot smaller so it takes more time. But I was just recovering as many what I consider rare files, like older scan later groups. Um, their work. Because once Batoto goes down, pretty much all the hosting websites and all the information on them pretty much disappears with it. 
So I saved what I could. It's far from as much as I would like to, but I only had about two weeks notice and the Red Squirrel system or program that I was using really didn't do a great job at the start. It did really good near the end. Um, it didn't work and then it started working and then it stopped working, you know. But I saved as much as I could. I'm depressed I couldn't get more. And I don't know, that's pretty much the whole of it. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, this is the whole reason I want to talk. I also kind of want to mention, like, if there's anything good about Pototo, at least personally, uh, about the website going down, is that while I was trying to recover things and save things, I also kind of remembered about a lot of series I just pretty much forgotten about. Like, and the, and the whole reason I even want to talk about this was because I rediscovered the series, or not the series, I'm sorry, I rediscovered uh, Cradle of Monsters, which is a, it, it's a small one. It came out maybe in 2007. Um, I don't have any information in front of me today. Well, as you hear, like, my, uh, my teapot, you'd hear a cup of coffee rattling in the background. Instead, you just hear the rain. Um, but I rediscovered Cradle of Monsters, and it was a really, it was a good read. It originally, like, okay, there's some problems with the setting, um, which is not a good thing. That's a very bad way to start the show. Like, basically, it's an overturned ship that's sinking, but it's completely flipped, which is fucking impossible. Um, and somehow the windows and the glass and everything just hasn't caved in and just submerged, you know, just everything in water, which doesn't make sense, but... You know, it's fine. It's compared to like every other show, which or not every other show, show, every other comic, which is literally just high school and romance and etchy and I mean, they're still etchy, but you know, it was just something different, and I really like that, especially because it came out maybe like near the end of my high school career. So it's something I didn't get a chance to finish, and now that I like, it was like, thank God, I think it was. Um, oh damn, I forget the people who did the full English translation. Cause it's never coming out in the US, it's way too, it's literally just pure etchy and then like the rest is gore. So yeah, <laughs> um, but which is a surprisingly good, like they work relatively well together, which is weird. Um, I don't know how to sanely describe that, but yeah, it, it was just an overall good read. And like, I was kind of impressed at how much detail the author actually put in to like creating their setting and like putting a relative amount of the um, the reader understanding what's going on with the basically zombies, um, why the ship hasn't sunk yet, the underlying plot, and how the like characters actually got to that point because they're in the middle of an ocean on an overturned ship. Um, you probably should do a fair amount of explaining because that's not the most common setting. Which I mean. Uh, it j it's just extra work that has to be done and like more research that has to be done that you just really don't see that often because like I don't know I don't know I'm just complaining at some point um, yeah it was just it was just very creative and I liked it and especially because the very early chapters have show multiple characters kind of interacting and there's a lot of great morality going on where people are dying and everyone's killing each other kind of um, uh, even though everyone's kind of insane at the same time there's very few characters that are just normal um like even the mc thank god he's a little abnormal because i'm sick of these i'm sick of just generic rom-com insert characters but he was kind of straight he was estranged he was a weird kid who basically was a loner um but like not loner in the sense that oh i'm just here because i want to be here no it's like no you're actually a fucking weird kid like you don't talk to anybody uh and part of that's probably because his family was like circus or whatever and i don't know He's just a very, he's a quiet and reserved character, but it's not because like he's just quiet, it's like he's just a little bit weird and he's a little bit unusual and he's trouble with his emotions and I don't know, he's just, he's just unusual and I liked it and it was good. It was actually good for the story that was being told, which in the early chapters was relatively strong. It had multiple characters kind of trying to survive and understand what's going on and it really gave a lot of that corpse party vibe, which I'm almost certain it was inspired heavily by. Like, there's just way too many similarities for it to not be, especially because it's coming from Japan, where people actually know what corpse party is. But yeah, it was just, um, it was doing a good job of weaving their storylines together and kind of having them rack up against each other. But the problem with the story, of course, is that it was cut short at about 40 something chapters. I think it was 43, I can't remember exactly right now. It was cut short, so 
what happened is we had to kind of wrap up all these loose ends and all these characters that were like half introduced and because the villain i, I think at least um the author's intention uh, intention or sorry let me, let me try to put this better um the villain that the author was trying to build couldn't get into the story fast enough, so they just said, okay, I'll just make one of the characters evil. And they did a good job recovering what they could, but it just, like, there was just such a personality shift. It was really obnoxious. It was, it was really frustrating because this character of relative subtly just became this dickhole, and it was really annoying to see this transformation because it was just unwarranted. Like, he didn't get hit in the head. There was no revelation. He just was like, oh, I'm gonna kill everybody. It's like, this is fucking stupid. And they gave him a backstory. Like, they even, they bothered to do that, thank God. But it's just kind of frustrating because, you know, I don't know, it's, it's just annoying. But it, the, I guess the important thing, or not really the important thing. And there's also another villain um, whose name I can't remember. It's to do with the spiky hair. I think he's blonde. It's hard to tell when it's black and white paneling. Um, he has the hair pushed back, and he's basically this... Well, he's really just a cult leader, um, if you think about it. He's got a relative amount of charisma, he's kind of violent, uh, he's definitely angsty. He's got a really shitty attitude, um... But he's this guy who kind of is... I think the best way to put him is Machiavellian. He just wants to get everything done as quickly as possible and as cleanly as possible. And his motives are never actually really shown either, which is kind of frustrating. Um... But, yeah, he, he shows up, and it's really, like, for a while, you're like, okay, this character, he's kind of good, he's kind of bad, I'm not really sure where he falls in the spectrum, because, like, it's shown he's, he's leading his own group, and he's trying to, like, look out for them to a relative degree. Maybe not as much as he should, but, you know, it's more about the methods he's using. Anyway, he's looking out for them, um, but it comes to one point, I think it's chapter 18, because because that's what I, I, I'm pretty sure it's chapter 18. But they're jumping across this overturned, uh, the elevator shoots still vertical. Um, they're jumping across it, and like, like the panel before, it's like, oh, there's an overshoot. So he quickly makes a decision, I'll just jump across it and do all this. And everyone's like, whoa, okay, calm down. Uh, that was really dangerous because it's a fall to your death. But he just jumps across it and kind of takes the initiative and does that, and he even finds a panel to uh, push across it so that he can walk properly across it, which is good. Um, but, and then everyone starts crossing, and near the end of it, because the ship is kind of, like, shaking and sinking as, like, new air pockets just burst, uh, uh, I suppose. It's a hard way to put it exactly, but basically the, sh the ship every now and then will just shake and rumble and sink further. So what happened is this happens while two people are crossing the bridge, and everyone just, there's, like, a scramble. There's a little bit of a scramble, and there's two people still on it. And they're trying to cross, and the other one, like, in the back, like, pushes and, like, tries to trample the other guy to get over. So they end up basically following, and he catches them, which is, again, more self-sacrifice. Like, he willfully did that. He could have just let them fall. He catches them, or catches the one kid, at least, and the other, cat's, uh, the other guy's hanging on. So he's like, okay, you know what? We're all going to fall if you don't let go, dude. And, of course, he's not going to, the guy on the bottom isn't going to comply. Like, there's just no way anyone's going to be like, yeah, I guess I'll just die now. There's, there's no way. No one will, no one willfully does that. So, of course, more quick thinking, he throws a line down. He throws a line down and basically says, okay, grab on this, I can't hold both of you. And so a guy just kind of puts all his weight on it and he just tumbles down. So you're like, okay, at least the way panel structured, yes. The dude, he threw the line down, not because, I mean, it was a it was a shitty decision, but it was kind of the only one he had because he couldn't hold them both. The guy was kind of, like, he even, he even insults him at the end. It's like, he's just dragging people down. Like, there's no way we can get both of them back up. And even though I don't have time to explain this to you, I need you to go. So, he does that. And he pulls the other guy up. The other guy just falls and tumbles down. And near the very end of it, you see the line cut with a knife he had in his pocket. Meaning, um, he could have saved both of them. He could have thrown the line down and they could have all been fine. But he made, he, he did this because he knows in the future that guy would pull them down even more. Like... It's still a gray morality, but we're definitely pulling further towards, like, this character is really kind of brutally efficient. Or not brutally efficient is not the best way to put it. But he's really just a brutal character. He doesn't necessarily see much value in other people. He's, uh, he leans far towards uh, saving himself versus others. And that's kind of like... It was just a very, very well done sequence. And I liked it a lot. And I haven't seen anything like that in a while. And I was really happy about it. 
and it actually made me kind of go and look for which author it was, um, which of course prompted this whole kind of discussion because lo and behold, it's the same author behind, same story and author, um, sorry, it's the same author and, uh, what am I trying to say? It's the same art, uh, blah, I'm having trouble speaking actually. It's the same artist and author behind Erased, which is another phenomenal show, like very, very well put together. Um, you know, but again, there's plot holes here and there, and there's just a little bit of inconsistency, but you know, nothing's perfect, of course. Um, but it's another really good show that has a good amount of horror and suspense and like that kind of brutal realism uh, and kind of like psychoticness, and, like, maybe not realism, but like everyone's still a little mad in Erased too, but it's just like, it's just more visceral of a story and I don't see those too often, which is kind of depressing. So I enjoyed it and it just kind of made me go and appreciate what the author's done. So I course, of course I'm looking at what else they've made and you know, I think, I mean, some of it was just etchy rom-com harem stuff, which has been their last two projects. Like it was their original first project too. Uh, and some more like kind of surreal stuff, I suppose as well, but like, I think the author just has a really strong comprehension of how to do suspense and horror right, which is why Erase succeeded so well, and I think Cradle of Monsters was good before it got rushed to be ended, I, I suppose. Um, and I just, I just really like that, because it's kind of hard to find that source of wit, um, which is depressing. But I'm just, I'm just rambling and ranting again. Anyway. I thought it was really good. I think I think both shows really kind of show off how good this author is at doing these kind of stories, which makes me really interested in their new project, which I, I think it's called The Girl Who Can't Speak. I can't remember what the title of it is, but it's like another kind of erased, um, the setting is with these two kids, about the same ages as the erased kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm really curious to see what it is because of course it's not translated yet. I can't really read it because it came back. It, first started published uh, in July, I think it was. It first started being published in July. So there's really nothing I can read from it yet, and I really want to because it looks like they're going back to this kind of horror and tragedy and suspense theming, which is perfect because it could be another really good series that I want to actually read and follow. But I just have to wait until then, I suppose. And I'm glad their talents are finally being used to something I feel is correct. Of course, that's my own opinion. Like, obviously, they have a very heavy interest in comedy and etchy, which is weird because their two best things don't display that very well. But um, whatever. I mean, this, of course, it's their choice. It's their authorial talent. They can use it however they want. But I'm just, I'm just happy to see that. Um, and I think in the future, I want to kind of study more about which, like, who the authors are and kind of kind of read up on what they've done in the past and what they're doing currently so I can kind of get a better feel of how strong they are at certain types of storytelling because I, I think that's more my passion than anything else is just understanding how to construct and effectively use a story. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I just, this was a fun study for me. I really enjoyed doing this so I might do it in the future. Um, but unfortunately I am at work and pulling into the parking garage and the rain is still pouring down on me. Um, and this person's going a little slow. Don't rush out, buddy. All right. So I'm probably going to have to call it here because I just kind of ran out of time. And I think I got through everything I wanted to talk about anyway. So, you know, that's good. Um, but yeah, I suppose thanks for listening. It's been a while. It's been since, like, December since I put anything out. So this was another fun project. I don't know how many more of these I'll make. Um, YouTube's kind of becoming tricky to do because I just don't have free time. I never had much, and I really don't have much now. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll... I'm, I'm considering doing something like... Oh, shit. Don't pull out. Um, I was considering doing something like... Uh, uh, Twitter. Twitter's what I was trying to say. Not Facebook. Of course not Facebook. Facebook's old as shit. Um, probably starting up a Twitter so I can better connect with the very few people that watch my stuff, which is like very minimal at best. Uh, but hey, I mean, if you like the stuff I made, comment, like, subscribe. That's what everybody says, right? That's what all the channels say. I should just get on the boat of that. But no, if you, if you actually did like the video, let me know in the comments so I can kind of, you know, tweak my style a little bit. I'm definitely developing in what I'm doing. Um, I enjoy YouTube a lot, even though it's like kind of the worst time to get into it because 
I mean, I don't care about profit, of course, but it's just hard to get your channel going when YouTube is just kind of this clusterfuck of failure. Um, uh, and even though I'm publishing on this platform, you know, it's just, I don't know, I don't know. I'll see what I have to do. I'm not gonna promise anything because I, I just don't know. It's hard to know anything. But yeah, um, thanks for listening. That's what, that's what the main point of this was. Appreciate it.